Hello, and welcome to the Anatomy of Knitting, episode 81. <laughs> I had to think about that for a moment. Uh, hello, my name is Erin, and I'm going to be your host. I will also apparently have a furry co-host, that's Ari. Today is October 1st, yes, I said your name, uh, 2015, and I am podcasting to you from Cork, Ireland. And it is uh, late morning here, it's just about 11 o'clock, a little bit later than I like to record. Um, but I was in town uh, running some errands this morning. So let's get started. Uh, this week we have Week in Review, we have uh, On the Needles, and uh, then some sewing and quilting stuff. Uh, this is probably going to be a little bit of a shorter episode compared to uh, last week, but last week's was so long, I don't think you'll mind a short one this time. So let's get started, right? Right. <clears throat> so the week in review, uh, it's been a relatively quiet week. Um, we've been recovering from going to Disneyland and uh, the boys and I have, uh, Nathaniel was starting to sk skip a couple of naps. I think he just hadn't expended as much energy as he had at uh, Disneyland. So uh, we, <laughs> the, the, the next door neighbor's dog, a lot of people in Ireland like to have their dogs off leash, which I'm, I don't really agree with, but that's a different story. Um, and apparently the, the next door neighbor's dog saw, saw Lola outside. So then had to chase after Lola. Anyway, uh, so Nathaniel skipped a couple of naps, uh, this past week, which cut into my sewing time. Um, but that's okay. Whatever. Um, so I, decided that we needed to like get out of the house and try and get a lot of physical activity. So um, Monday we stuck by the house. I don't remember why. Oh, um, there's a there's a toddler group that's run by the gymnastics club here in town um, that apparently was supposed to start up at some point, but hasn't yet. Um, so we're in I'm interested in taking them to do that. Um, but that we didn't go out because uh, they, they hadn't started it yet. Um, Tuesday, we went to the Blarney um, playground. There's uh, a nice playground uh, right on the other side of Blarney Castle and the Blarney Woolen Mills. And uh, so we did that. Um, and it was a really good experience for them. It's a park that has a lot of stuff that's um, much more geared towards their age. The park here in, in, in Ballincollig, in the village that I live in, um, there's a lot of equipment that's for older kids, which the boys want to try out because it looks really fun. Um, so I haven't been brave enough to take them there by myself. Uh, I, I much prefer having a second adult there um, because, you know, the boys tend to do this. <laughs> so, um, but Blarney went really well. Uh, Nathaniel wanted to be on the swing all the time. Um, so I was kind of stuck pushing him on the swing and Malcolm just did a whole bunch of stuff that he wanted to do. There was a, a merry-go-round or as he liked to call it, the roundabout. Um, it's got bicycle pedals, which powers it instead of, you know, like, like running and then jumping on, you know, running with it and jumping on. Um, it's got bicycle pedals that you could sit and pedal and it, it makes the, it makes the merry-go-round go around. So he liked to kind of pull it. He would walk beside it and pull it. Uh, there is a, a little train that, um, is, uh, there, <laughs> a wooden train, and he spent a lot of time on that. Um, and then there's a, a, a younger child's playground, uh, section. So there's, a, a slide, there's a, there's a climbing wall, and, uh, he just spent a lot of time there. And that was, that was really fun. Um, unfortunately, it was cut a little bit short because, um, some gentlemen, the, the lawn care gentlemen came and uh, started using their mowers and Nathaniel was not really happy about that. Uh, then yesterday we went to the big shopping mall, um, which is not all that big. <laughs> it's called Mahan Point. And um, so we went there. There's a, a kid zone, which has a, a cushion floor and slides and um, one of those little tykes castles. It's a big castle uh, with a tower that, that the boys are finally able to climb up into by themselves. And so we spent a little, I want to say about an hour and a half there. Um, 
and then had lunch at the mall and then came home. And so the past two days, naps have been really easy. Take the boys upstairs and they're out like a light. <laughs> so that's the, uh, that's the task is, is I just have to wear them out. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get brave enough to start taking them into the village without their stroller. Um, but I haven't quite gotten there yet. Um, my husband's against getting one of the, you know, getting those backpacks that have like a leash on them. Um, but you know, I, part of me, you know, like they kind of need it. They're, they're two toddlers. Um, and unless they're holding my hands constantly, which they don't want to do, um, when they're out and walking, you know, I don't want them running into traffic. So that's why I haven't actually taken them into, uh, into the village all by myself because it's, it can, there can be a lot of traffic. So, um, they're at the crush now and I'm, uh, I went, I went into town. Um, I'm working on Halloween costumes. The, um, I, when I was in the States, I purchased some blue felt for their, uh, cause they're going to be Mario and Luigi. And so I got some blue felt for their, for their overalls and, I uh, hadn't quite found uh, the right, um, I'm having a break, uh, the fleece, thank you. Uh, I hadn't found the right colors fleeces uh, at the store that I was at. Uh, I think it was Fabric Depot that I looked at. Like I could find red, but I couldn't find green, or maybe I could find green, but I couldn't find red. So I said, oh, well, Ireland will have red and green fleece. They don't. They have red fleece, which I purchased, but they don't have green. So, and neither, and, and I didn't purchase, uh, shirts for them in the States either. Um, when I was doing my, my big shopping trip for uh, fabric there, because I thought, oh, well they'll have, they'll have red and green, you know, plain t-shirts, long sleeve t-shirts that, that we can use, you know, the red and green for, um, I found red again, but I didn't find green. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna have to get on the internet. Um, the only green, plain green, like a crew neck shirt, long sleeve shirt I've been able to find is from a, a store, a retail store in the United States. And I'm, I'm hoping to avoid purchasing uh, a shirt and then having to ship it over here because that's pretty expensive. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. I have to do some internet sleuthing because amazon.co.uk does not have what I want. Anywho, that's the week in review. Um, let's get on to our works in progress. I did a little bit of work on my um, socks here. This is my Sweet Georgia Yarns. This is fairly uh, vintage Sweet Georgia Yarns in the Blue Fig colorway. I want to say congratulations to Felicia and her team at Sweet Georgia Yarns. They're celebrating uh, 10 years in business, which is which is pretty significant. Uh, I've had this in my stash for years and uh, I decided to just do a stockinette stitch sock. I, um, this is my just regular vanilla sock. I do about an inch of one by one rib. I do a stockinette stitch cuff. I do that lovely textured slip stitch heel and then turn my, turn my heel. Sorry if I'm hitting my microphone there. I gotta pay attention to that. Um, than my regular gusset and I'm currently working on the foot. So there's the pooling on the front and there's the pooling on the back. I like that bottom part of the pooling. That's really fun. Which is why I put it, which is why I put the cuff, the prettier cuff side to have facing forward. Uh, I think I got maybe three or four rows on this um, when the boys were outside running around. Um, we have a fairly nice backyard with a, a swing set. Uh, unfortunately, they haven't quite figured out how to um, use the swing set on their own. They need they need me to A, get them up on the seats and B, push them. I can't wait for them to learn how to use swings. <laughs> it's just gonna open up so much more freedom for them. You know, they can get on the swings when they want. And uh, I've tried, when my mom was here, in September, she tried to like physically show them, but 
Um, the swing set here is a little old and I, I didn't feel comfortable saying that it would hold her. Um, because I, I, if the boys were twice their weight, I don't think it would hold them. So, um, yeah, I, I'm restricted from doing a lot of, a lot of knitting outside, uh, on the socks, which is, is basically when I'm, when I'm knitting on this is when I'm just kind of watching them, you know, I can, cause I can knit and not look like I am right now. <laughs> so yeah, got a, a couple of rounds on here. I think not a lot. It's, I'm close to doing the toe. I just have to do, I think maybe about a half an inch more. So, got a half round done there for you. So, Sweet Georgia socks. There's the ball that I have left. And that's, that's pretty accurate, the colors. This late morning um, light is, is really nice. It's, um, it's a little, little bit overcast today. Um, I guess it's, it's considered more partly cloudy. Partly, yeah, it wouldn't be partly sunny. Um, so, yep. That's that. And then um, the next thing I have on the needles, I started before our trip. And again, I got water on the pattern. So forgive my, forgive my splotched uh, picture there. This is the, maybe there's a picture on the front of the pattern somewhere. Acorn Trail. And this is the custom fit recipe. So it's got that lovely texture on the back. And I am knitting this out of my Blarney Woolen Mills Donegal Tweed Hand Knitting Wool. Made in Donegal, Ireland. 100% pure new wool. It's in the highly descriptive shade of B4644. And uh, last week I showed you that I had the completed back. Like so. That's a little more red that you see here. It's it's not as it's not as uh I'd say that's more of an accurate color there. Yeah, right there. Perfect. Just depends on the way I have my head or something. <laughs> anyway, there's the lovely back with the texture. And again, I'm doing the, uh, so you get the, you get the custom fit recipe, which has, um, tells you how to do the cables and, um, does it, yeah, it doesn't tell you, um, like the numbers for your size. So I also had to purchase, and I have no idea what I put in the bag. It must have been like a Coke or something. Um, this is my custom fit recipe. There's no pretty pictures on it, unfortunately, uh, for making my size. So I basically have to use two patterns to knit the sweater um, because this doesn't take into account those cable panels. Um, and this does. So you, you know, like for the right front, it says cast on the number of stitches specified in your custom fit pattern plus two to account for the smaller gauge of the cables. So, you know, you cannot, you, you cast on the number that's, that's said in here and then you, you follow. And it, you kind of have to read both patterns at the same time, which is a little, it's a little cumbersome, but it's a beautiful sweater and it's going to fit me and nobody else in the end. <clears throat> I also have one sleeve complete. Seems a little roomy, but whatever. I'll make it work. Once it's uh, sewn in, it'll look good. I always feel like I should. Anyway. <sighs> pretty, pretty. Love that tweed yarn. So much tweed. And uh, then last evening, while my husband and I were watching Fear the Walking Dead, I cast on uh, the right front, which just seems really tiny. <laughs> I, 
I know there's going to be a button band uh, that's that's knit, picked up and knit on, but that just seems really tiny for a right front. But whatever. I'm using the number she told me to, so it should fit. Um, I think that's about it with the with that pattern. Yep. Um, I'm using my Wee Ones uh, stitch markers. I've got uh, sheep and black cats and cupcakes, which I really like. And uh, yeah, so the way I'm doing it is I, I knit the back, I knit a sleeve, then I'm going to knit a front, I'm going to knit the other sleeve, and then I'm going to finish with the front, I think. So that should be fun. Um, yeah, that's everything I've been knitting on. Uh, a couple of sewing things. Uh, I have, I'm this close to finishing my Halloween costume. I think last time I spoke to you, I was going to finish sewing the muslin because uh, I think Nate not sleeping was a common theme last week as well. Um, so I sewed the muslin, it fit well, and I cut out my pattern and started to sew the fashion fabric, which is a pink polyester satin, which is ugh, to work with. Um, don't really like working with it, um, but I'm, I'm not going to spend the money on a, on a silk satin um, for a Halloween costume, something I'm going to wear once or twice. So, um, and then there's a sparkly, uh, sparkly pink that goes on, the, there's a skirt puff and it goes on the sleeves as well. Let me see if I can pull it up. There it is. Oh yes, it's that pink. <laughs> That's the skirt. Uh, puff and the sleeve and then come on download 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 it's gonna be blurry but that's the pink satin um so i i got the dress complete i just have to sew a hem but i have to bring my uh, second sewing machine uh, up from downstairs because it's got i have to overlock the edge because you don't you don't turn a quarter of an inch and then turn the hem. You finish the edge and then you just turn it up once, I believe, is what it says in the directions to do. So I have to, I have to finish the edge so I don't have fraying uh, satin because that satin frays like nobody's business. It's a good thing I'm only going to wear it once or twice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mommy's trying to talk to the internet. Lay down. Lay down. There you go. Um... The only other thing I've sewn this week is um, for the Modern Irish Bee, that's the um, that's the Modern Irish Quilters uh, are doing a um, bee, so once a month uh, you get an email saying this is the block you need to make. This was the block, and um, the person in charge of this month wanted a gray background and then this block in oranges, and blues so I'll be sending them off in the next day or so um, she wanted her seams pressed open and I'm quite proud of my attractive seams so pretty uh, let's see what was I gonna say about this uh, I had I, I was late I usually like to do my blocks fairly early in the month um, but I was late because I uh, I didn't have the fabric. I didn't have the gray fabric, and then I needed to get some more of those aqua fabrics. Um, and the way that this, this, oh, sweetie, my goodness, you need to lay down. Um, the way that this pattern tells you to um, make the half square triangles, you, these are, all these components are half square triangles. So you make, you make a square out of two tri triangles. Um, and there's lots of ways you can do it. Um, you can cut a square to two triangles and then take two different two different colored triangles and sew those together. You can um, put two squares on top one another, draw a line across one of those squares and sew a quarter of an inch on either side of that line. Um, and then the way that I constructed my half square triangles in this project is that I had a big square and I sewed a quarter inch around each edge and then I cut on the diagonal, which exposes biased edges. Um, on the on the outside of the half square triangle, which I didn't quite like. Um, I'm not very good at, at 
not skewing my biased edges. Sweetie, you're getting claws into me, and I don't really like that. <clears throat> I don't really work, like working with biased edges because I, I tend to stretch them. So um, it was good to use this technique um, to make these blocks, but I don't think I'll use that, that technique uh, again. Sweetie, please. Mommy's trying to record. I'm going to put you down on the ground. Thank you. Um, and the only other thing I've been working on is we're going to be making a trip to Ikea, um, coming up with a shopping list. Uh, we get the, they, they drop the Ikea catalog in our, um, mail slot in the front door. So there's lots of, there's lots of inspiration here and I'm trying to come, become a little more organized, um, with this house. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking into what kind of uh, organization tools Ikea has that we can, we can use. Um, the only Ikea here is in Dublin, so we have to take that two and a half, three hour car trip up there. And uh, yeah, so it's a little bit of a pain and it requires preparation. I can't just go in and, and browse because we've got our two little, our two little ones. So I think that's about it. Only, uh, only about uh, 25 minutes long, I think, this podcast will be. But again, after last week, I don't think uh, you'll mind. So thank you for watching. Um, you can find me on Instagram. I am EKSRN2002. I am on Ravelry at Knitting RN. I have a website for uh, the podcast, which I upload uh, the video to. It's at theanatomyofknitting.com. I, hmm, what else? I'm a Craftsy affiliate. So if you uh, are going to buy a Craftsy class for any reason, um, please take a moment and go to theanatomyofknitting.com and click the banner I have on the, no, this side <laughs> of the website. Um, there's a, there's a, a Craftsy banner. It just kind of uh, notices where you're coming from, from like, because you click on it and then it takes you to Craftsy. It, it tells Craftsy that you you went through the website or you went through my website to get there and they give me a little um, a little little kickback for that. Um, and it's just to help kind of um, help with the podcast fees. So, because uh, I've been out of work for almost three years now, uh, being a mom and yeah, uh, my... The amount of money that I have saved is quickly dwindling and I need to uh, find some ways to just have the podcast pay for itself, really. <sighs> I think that's it. Yeah, I don't think I have anything else. So I shall see you next week. Hopefully I will have um, some more Halloween costumes to show. Um, mine is hanging up upstairs. I haven't I haven't brought it down. I should have brought it down to show you. It's, it's just this pink shiny it's not a mess but it's it's like pink and shiny <laughs> something I never thought I'd really wear but oh I bought a um, I got on uh, Etsy um, because I was looking for a princess peach has this like amulet that she wears on her chest like there and then she's got the crown so um, I first looked on like a Halloween store to see if they just had the accessories they don't uh, then I I looked on Etsy and there's, there's a, a guy on there. Let me see if I can quickly find it for you in case you're like a cosplayer and you don't know about this gentleman and you like to do like um, Super Mario. Let's see, search for Princess Peach. So um, I purchased the amulet and crown. Uh, the one that I'm talking about um, is Perfect Tommy Auto Mail. Um, he's got all sorts of uh, different crowns and accessories for um, costumes and, and cosplaying. Uh, and the Princess Peach crown looks amazing. And I'd love to get it, but A, it's expensive to ship over here. Um, and B, I was concerned I wouldn't get it in time. So what I ended up getting 
me see if I can find it, is from Chomp Works, and that's C-H-O-M-P-W-O-R-K-S, Chomp Works. Um, and uh, I'm getting a 3D printed Princess Peach crown and amulet. So my Halloween costume is about 90% complete. I just need to get those things in and then it will be 100% complete. And the hem done. <laughs> but I'm dragging my feet on doing the hem. Anyway, um, I think that's it. Do you have anything to say? No, you're just purring. Uh, thank you for watching, and I believe I shall see you next week. Um, so happy knitting, and I'll see you then. Bye.